This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, April the 24th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Melitus, an Italian-born priest who was part of the great Gregorian mission sent from Italy to England to convert the pagan Anglo-Saxons in the first half of the 7th century. Melitus was the first bishop of London in A.D. 604 and the third archbishop of Canterbury in 619. As with many of the English saints, there are lots of stories of miracles, especially in defending the cathedral against terrorist attacks. He was said to have saved the entire city of Canterbury from a great fire in 623, and he died the following year. Today is also the traditional feast day of Mary of Clopas, one of the women who followed Jesus throughout his ministry. Now, there is some potential confusion with Mary of Clopas and Mary of Cleopas. Were they the same person? Were they two different people? Is this just a different spelling? Turns out pretty much everyone in the ancient world says they were the same person. Of course, many modern scholars believe they're two different people. Officially, the church hasn't weighed in, but most of the saints who wrote about the scripture consider them to be the same person. There's also some confusion about the phrase Mary of Clopas. Does that mean Mary the wife of Clopas or Mary the daughter of Clopas? Well, there's no way to get any more information out of the Greek. Again, most of the ancient sources go with wife and many of the moderns go with the opposite. But then we ask, who is Clopas or Cleopas? They're the same person according to all the ancients. It turns out that basically everyone in the ancient world identified Clopas as the brother of St. Joseph. And so Mary of Cleopas, or Clopas, would have been the sister-in-law of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that's exactly how the historian Hegesippus and St. Jerome both lay it out. She only shows up by name once at the cross in John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 25, where she is listed with the other women at the foot of the cross. And today, traditionally, is the day of her feast. Finally, today in 1800, the United States Library of Congress was established when President John Adams signed a bill to appropriate $5,000 to purchase, quote, such books as may be necessary for the use of Congress. James Madison had the original idea in 1783, and President Thomas Jefferson was a major player in the initial structure. In 1802, he hired the first librarian of Congress and made the rule that only the president and vice president could borrow books, that is, take books out of the building. The library was destroyed during the War of 1812, and it was Thomas Jefferson who sold his personal library to the U.S. government in order to rebuild the Library of Congress. The government paid just short of $24,000 to purchase about 6,500 books on all sorts of topics. And this is when the Library of Congress went from being a library for Congress to being a great archive of the United States media and print and so forth. The library's collection grew over the years to include resources far beyond books, including maps, newspapers, magazines, lithographs, music on vinyl, cassette, CD, and digital, as well as film media of various sorts. Michael Jackson's thriller video is part of the collection, as are two priceless Stradivarius violins. Nowadays, the Library of Congress also administers certain aspects of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. The library itself is open for academic research, but resources cannot be removed from the building. In fact, most of the resources are part of the closed collection and only available by formal request. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.